Reiche from Reise Letter Science. I'm here with my DT project for Junk with Steph for September. And I've decided to make a front cover for a future journal for my own use. Um, yeah, like a planner journal sort of thing. But first I will just show you some of the pages from the from this kit which is which is called antiquity and i'm of course linking both steph's shop and steph's instagram and uh, a link to this kit and the add-on down below but first here's some of the pages from the kit they're gorgeous um with with the background text and the the um, what's it called um damask like pattern on top they're absolutely gorgeous i think they're just great and i've cut out some of the ephemera and it's vintage vintage scans scans of vintage ephemera So there's really a lot to pick from. Oops. And then Steph has made these, I think they're labels, where you could just put your own words. And there's a bunch of those. And then there's this nameplate for the front cover and a heart with some script. So first of all, I'm going to be using this piece and I want to make some sort of layering with some vellum and some um, recycled paper. So I'm starting off by cutting this to size. all the layers for the front cover like this so what I'm going to do now is to ink up all the edges with my vintage photo like that now I'm actually going to put them together but what I'm going to do is actually to sew around the edges so let me just take this to my sewing machine and I'll be back so now I've sewed around both pieces so now I'm just cutting off these strings so now we actually need to decide which type of embellishment we want and I think I want this hard so I'm just inking up the edges like that and what I want as well is some numbers and I've actually just bought some numbers and I don't like this shininess but I thought that maybe we could cover them with some ink so I just need to decide which number I'm going for and I think I'm going for number 42. So 
so I'm just taking out number four. Number two. Maybe we should go for 43 or 41. Mm. Oh, 42 it is. And what I was hoping was to be able to put on some alcohol inks. Or some distressed dabber. So let us just try. Let me just grab a piece here to put it on. Okay. Yeah. This is what I thought. The ink doesn't stick at all. So we're going to be using the alcohol inks because they will be staying. Could we just... Maybe we should add some acrylic paint as well to to give them some more covering because it, it sticks but now the letter is just golden instead of silver so I think we're going to be adding some acrylic paints once this is dry. Yeah. And then we're going to let them dry. Wait for them to dry. So, <clears throat> I'll check back when they are dry. Hi guys. The result with the alcohol ink on these numbers didn't turn out the way I wanted to. So, I decided to just um, give the numbers some acrylic paint, as you see here. So, I just wanted to pop on here to do the same thing to the fourth. Um... So you could see what I was doing. And let me just zoom you in a little. So you can see here. What's what we're going to do. I'm just putting some acrylic paint onto the brush. And now I'm just dabbing the, the number to cover all the shininess with this brown. And then I have this. Mm. Yeah, it's called unbleached titanium. And I'm just <clears throat> taking a little amount of that and dabbing it onto the number as well. And then I just wanted to put some more dark on the two. So, like that. And um, now we're just going to wait for it to dry before we can go further with the project. So, see you when the, these numbers are dry. So, now I'm back. And the numbers have dried. And I really like how they turned out, actually. So, I'm going to embellish the front cover 
as I said, I would love to have the heart down there. And I was thinking to maybe have the numbers here on the heart. Like, like this, I think. And while I was waiting for the numbers to dry, I just glued together a cluster from some of the ephemera from the kit. And I was thinking to maybe add them something like that. Maybe I want to add some cloth underneath. I don't know how this will look. Not as I hoped for, but maybe under the heart. Something like that. Just going to crunch up the edge and then let's see. Yeah, I think I think that's cute. So now I'm going to glue down these ephemera pieces. layer here just need some more defining as well like that and what I was thinking now was actually to have you along on the journey of making the journal so I'm just going to fold some pages and then I will come back to you okay now I have cut some pages. I've cut, um, how many was it? 58 pages folded and cut to size. I've cut them to seven inch and three quarters in the height and five inches and a half in the width. And what I'm going to do now is to make marks for the holes. And I'm going to make six holes. Um, hope you can see what I'm doing. They need to be very, very straight. So that's why I'm using a ruler. Like this. five and six yeah they will work even though they are not evenly spaced out it doesn't matter what's uh, what's matter is that they are straight this way hmm? okay so now I'm going to punch the holes and I'll just speed that process up. Mm -hmm. 
So now I've punched all the holes in all of the signatures. So what we're going to do now is to sew this signature block together. So now I've sewn all the signatures together. Um, this was actually the first time I tried this binding method. Um, and I actually think you can see here, I didn't manage to tighten up the strings as much as I should have, but my plan is to hold this very, very tight when I glue it into the signature. Um, and what I also want to do is actually to take some strips of Tyvek. Three strips, I think. To To have a long here to just hold them close. So I'm going to do that. I'm just gluing them on. So what we're going to do now is to Decide what we want for cover. Okay, I just found this book here. Let me just zoom you out a little. This is not poop. This is ink. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's just gorgeous. I can't decide if it's a little too big or... Hmm. What about the cover? It actually fits perfectly. Let me just think about that. Okay, I decided to go with this as a cover. So I'm going to split the signature block from the cover and I'm using my X-Acto knife to do so i'm just <clears throat> cutting down along here so now we have our cover and i actually like this paper here very much because it has a great pat patina to it with this these brown stains of age and then there's this beautiful stamp from the owner of the book and the spine doesn't need any um, uh, reinforcement it's in perfect almost perfect condition so and actually the signature block is a little too small but I feel like it doesn't matter yeah so what we what we need to do now is to put some end papers on on the signature block and I feel like Stephanie's papers are just perfect for this and I think I will go for this one. So I just need to measure um, and cut it to size. They should fit perfectly. And they does. So I'm just inking up the edges. Like that. And now we're going to glue them down to the signature block. I really like 
like those page pages. They're just gorgeous. I was thinking to maybe add some of Stephanie's paper to the spine as well. Um, or we could use some of this paper from the signature block, but it's not long enough, I think. I think that's what we're going to do. So now we're just gluing that onto the inner spine. Actually, I feel like I'm just going to stick down the signature block. Yeah, so I'm running some glue along. I'm just placing it, eyeballing it to the middle. And waiting for it to dry. You don't have to watch this. I'll check back in when it's dry. Okay, guys, it's not quite dry yet, but I've added some strips here to keep the sign signature block um, in place. So I've just cut more of this end paper from the original book and added some double sided tape here to make sure the signature block will stay and then I still need to wait for it to dry completely. So I'll check back when the signature has dried completely. So now the signature block has dried and there's a lot of pages in here. And it actually lays flat, so it's nice and smooth to write in. And here's the front cover. And I've just cut the corners to fit this beautiful binding, authentic binding. But I want to make a closure and I want to make a circle closure, so I'm just poking a hole and then I'm punching a circle just making sure the hole is in the middle sort of like that and then I've poked some some cardboard, no, what it's called, cardstock circles to make it sturdier. So I'll just ink around the white one to define it a little more. like that and then I'm going to glue those circles together so now I'm going to poke a hole with my crubber dial where I marked the middle like this and now I'm going to find a brush, which will work. And I'm thinking to just use this one. 
just a regular brass bread. So what I want to do now is to mark where I want the circle to be. And I think it should be something like this or this. Yeah, <clears throat> like that. And then I'm using my awl to poke a hole. And then I'm going to I will use this one, this waxed thread, as the binding. Not the binding, the closure. So I'm just cutting a piece and then I'm tying it around the bread. Let me just zoom you in a little. So I'm just tying it around the bread. With a double knot if it would work. Like this and then like this oh i did, i made a mistake just a moment it should of course be on the top no wait a minute Hmm. Okay, I think I will just put the bread through the hole in the cover. Like that. Yeah, and then I will just close the bread. And then I'm going to... Tie a double knot around here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like this and like this. Okay, as you can see, I didn't make a mistake the first time. I just thought I did, but I didn't. So I've tied a double knot around the bread like this. And then I'm going to put it through. Let me zoom you out. Put it through the hole. And then I'll open the bread like that. So actually now we can just glue the cover to the book. And now the... And now the book ties up like this. So we don't need that much of thread. So 
So I'm tying a knot, double knot, like that, and cutting off. So now we have used Stephanie's beautiful paper for the front cover and for the end papers. And I'm thinking of using some of Stephanie's paper, beautiful paper to make some decorations inside. But I think I will just do that when I when I am going to set up the planner. And if you want to watch a video of me setting up this planner. Let me know down in the comments and I will, of course, be very, very happy to to um, make a video of me setting up, up this planner. I hope you liked what you see and if you did, please give the video a like and cons please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Otherwise, I'll just see thank I'll just say thank you for watching and see you next time. Have a nice day and happy crafting. Bye.